Hey, it's Norm from Tested.com. I'm here at Comic Con 2013. One of my favorite booths to stop by every Comic Con, Adam 2, is Prop Store. I'm here with Stephen Lane. Good to see you again, Stephen. See you again, dude. And what do you guys have this year from your collection? Because you have a big collection here in, in London and in LA, yeah. and you bring a couple over to show for the first time to the public. Yeah. What's this here in front? It looks very familiar. I think most guys are going to recognize this piece. And uh, this is actually a piece that we only unearthed about uh, eight to ten months ago. It was sort of on our radar for a little while. Uh, get it? But this piece is the close-up hero aliens tracker that was used in the movie. This is something that is just one of those holy grail pieces that, as I say, we didn't know still existed. And this piece was used for a lot of the, the very close-up tight insert shots. Um, what's really great about it is that the, uh, the guy, I got it from the son of one of the visual effects guys who worked on the film, and he was responsible for, for building this and doing a lot of the footage and graphics on this. And so he actually retained all of the components that you can see here. And what we have is the, the sort of small TV body that they basically ripped apart, one of those old sort of portable TVs from back in the day, that they ripped apart, removed the tube, and then fed that up inside the housing here. And when you have a look at it, you can see that the technology at that time didn't actually allow you to, to fit everything inside it. So it actually pokes out the back side of it. So it had to be for close, tight up shots. And there are a couple of shots in the film that we believe where you can actually see this bit sticking out the back of it. And so what they had to do was keep this body connected to the main screen and then feed the, the signal through. Um, and that then came up on the TV screen here. So, you know, when they're walking around, it's just a dummy graphic that's in there and maybe just a pulsing light or a flashing light. But for all of the close-up shots, this is the unit that would have been seen. One of the really exciting aspects about this was the guy had also kept hold of the umatic tape that had the original graphics. So these are the original graphics here that would have actually been streamed up onto this, this, this screen for the film. Um, and, of course, a umatic tape, not a lot you can do with that these days, so we had that converted to digital. And then we've dropped that in here and chipped it into this little unit here and fed that up just to this little LED screen here so that people can actually see the original graphics that were used on screen. Um, and the great thing about this is that these were actually labeled up. So it's like a pony spins 90 degrees to the right or whatever it is so that they would know where they're going to use that shot and who's going to be, who it's relevant to as well. But this is the first time it's ever been seen. The, the guys on the, on the aliens forums are just going nuts because it's, it's suddenly here, it's survived and uh, nobody knew it was still around. Can you call any of the, the components here or how the prop builders actually made this? What did they construct this out of? Well, as I was saying, I mean, the, the, the main body itself is uh, actually a, a Hilti, Hilti drill component, I believe it is. So this is the sort of all the paint chipping away, revealing what's originally there. Other than that, I think around the side here, we have a, a keyboard. And, and I'm sorry, but the replica prop guys are going to hound me here because I, I don't actually know what that's from specifically because it's not, you know, as I say, our forte is, is finding the original thing. But you've got a keypad here on the side. Um, you've got a, lots of little greeblies that have just been bolted onto it. And as I say, for the most of the units, they wouldn't have even had this sort of TV unit built into it. It would have just literally been just a, a pulsing light and nothing more. That's amazing, Stephen. Thank you so much for having us here. So if those guys from the Repco Prop Forum are here, take some photos, get oh, some reference like images. Oh, they've they've been, been, they are here already. Yeah, yeah. So let's take a look at some other things that you have here from the collection. All right, so I'm now here with Brandon Allinger, and you work for Propster now, but you were actually one of the founding members of the RPF, right? That's right, yeah. I did uh, found the original version of the RPF back in... 1995 or 96 or something like that, yeah. So you have a special appreciation for how fans love these props and want to re recreate them, and this has got to be one of the most iconic props of cult movie history. From Ghostbusters 2, The Ghost Trapper. So I'm a big Ghostbusters fan myself, so I really love this piece. Uh, I think these are great movies. I think the props in particular, the hardware that they built for the Ghostbusters films is fantastic stuff. It's all so of that era, that era of great prop building, very similar to the DeLorean and Back to the Future or the hand props in Star Wars where everything is cannibalized out of real world parts and because of that it just has a very tactile nature to it that is just, uh, it's very realistic in my opinion. This particular piece was built specifically for the second film. Apparently on the first movie there were a lot of complaints about the weight of the props because they were all built out of metal. Maybe not all metal. The packs and I think had fiberglass components, the shells were fiberglass, but certainly the traps were aluminum in the first film and they were hefty. This piece is primarily cast out of fiberglass. The handle is aluminum, the plate on the bottom is aluminum, uh, the side detail plates are aluminum, but the body is just fiberglass, so it's light. It's light and it's smaller than they were in the first film. 
It does have functional electronics. They've been restored because the internal components have been damaged when we got it. I think it was wet at some point. If I flick the switch here, you can see these lights come on, and then you get the flashing light at the back here indicating that you've got a ghost. Wow, so in making this movie, they didn't just have one trap that they use for you know the mounting on the side and the rolling and the light up. They use they used the one, right? It wasn't multiple. Well, there were, there were a few different versions, I think, because I think even on the second film, they did still have metal versions. I think they had a practical version that, that where the doors opened up. On this one, the doors are just cast, cast in place. You know, there's no functionality there, no movement. Uh, but you do specifically see this trap in the film. Uh, there's the scene early on where they've got all the gear laid out on the courtroom table, and you can see this trap sitting there with a lot of the other gear, and you can identify it because the bottom plate here is this raw aluminum, whereas most of the bottom plates are anodized, they're black. And then if you look at some of the other details, the way the tapes are striped on, the pattern and the angle, you can see that it's this exact piece, which is pretty cool. It's a wonderful piece. Thank you so much, Brandon. You guys have so much stuff here. I know it's just a small fraction of the collection. The big star piece here seems to be Dread. Dread's been very popular. It seems like there's a lot of guys out there who are building their own Dread suits, so they've really enjoyed seeing this one. Uh, it is an original suit from the film, worn by Carl Urban. We did a promotional sale of Dread items earlier this year that went very well. There's a lot of interest in that. And what other pieces here do you want to call out? We've got an original bullwhip, uh, an original Indiana Jones bullwhip used in the second and third films by Harrison Ford. Uh, we've got Sigourney Weaver's flamethrower from Alien over there. We've got some Ardman stop motion puppets from their film, The Pirates Band of Misfits, which came out last year. Uh, we've got an original Superman 2 crystal behind us over here. Sounds like you guys have a lot of pretty cool things. You guys are based in LA and London. Is, is prop store open to the public for people to walk in and, and look at some props on display? It is, yeah. We're not really a, a storefront, a retail storefront where people come in off the street. We're more of a working warehouse, but we are open. We're, we're available to be toured by the public. We just ask that people drop us a line and get in touch and we'll set up a time. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you for bringing all this stuff oh, to Comic-Con and not keeping it in the warehouse like in Indiana Jones. That's what it's all about is getting out there and sharing with people who enjoy it. So, no, thank you. Thank you. And we'll have more stuff from Comic-Con 2013 from Prop Store, from other booths on Tested.com. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check out all our cool stuff. I'm Norm. I'll see you next time. Bye.